Hello everyone. So today let's finish off with the last part of the module lipids, which is classification of lipids, which includes simple, compound, and derived lipids, each with one example. And we'll also be looking into structure of triglycerides, lecithin, and cephalin. So I'll start out with simple lipids. So simple lipids can be defined as esters of fatty acids with alcohols. That's it. They do not contain any other functional groups. So that's basically the definition of simple lipids. They also have two subtypes, which are neutral fats or triglycerides. And the other one is waxes. So I'll explain that in detail. So I'm going to write the definition first. So, so they can be defined as esters of fatty acids. With alcohol. they do not contain any other functional group. They can be divided into two. So they are neutral fats. or triglycerides and the second one is waxes so let's see what triglycerides are so we have to study the structure of triglycerides so I'll explain that as well so triglycerides as the name suggests it is composed of one glycerol molecule and three fatty acid chains so I'm gonna draw that Glycerol is a trihydric alcohol, which means that it has three OH groups. There's monohydric, dihydric, and trihydric. So yeah, glycerol is a trihydric alcohol. This is combined with three fatty acids. I'm going to roughly draw three fatty acids. So glycerol and these three fatty acids can undergo dehydration synthesis. So dehydration means losing water. So in this reaction, we can see that they lose water. The OH group from the fatty acid and the H group from glycerol. So that will happen here as well. And here as well. Undergoes dehydration synthesis. So when that reaction occurs, what we get here is plus 3H2 because 3 water is being lost as the reaction happens. This reaction is reversible. So triglycerides can be used to form glycerol and 3 fatty acids and it's called hydrolysis. water is used to cut. That's what hydrolysis means. So that's all for triglycerides and its structure. Moving on to waxes, which was the second part of simple lipids. There's not much that we have to study ab about that. So when it comes to waxes, they are just fatty acids with long chain alcohols other than glycerol. So waxes contain fatty acids with long chain alcohols other than glycerol. An example for this would be paraffin wax. or cetyl palmitate. Uh, the formula for these would be C31H64. So this is an alkane 
and the formula for acetyl palmitate would be C32H64O2. This is a wax ester. So yeah, so that's pretty much it for waxes. So moving on to the next type of classification of lipids, which is compound lipids. These are esters of fatty acid with alcohol containing additional groups such as phosphate, nitrogenous bases, carbohydrates, proteins, etc. So to put it simply, compound lipids they are lipids that contain additional functional groups such as phosphate, sugar, sulfur or amino groups, that's it. They are lipid lipids that contain additional functional groups like phosphate, sugar, sulfur and amino groups. So compound lipids can be further divided into different types of lipids. So they include phospholipids, glycerophospholipids, sphingophospholipids. glycolipids lipoproteins amino lipid etc so these are just a few examples under compound lipids in this we have to mainly focus on phospholipids so let's see. So what are phospholipids? They are lipids that contain the functional group phosphate. That's it. They have a phosphate group to the lipids. Contain phosphate group. They are mainly the lipid components of biological membranes, as you know, the lipid bilayer. Main lipid component of biological membranes. And they are also amphipathic. hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail. So let's see how the structure is of phospholipids. Yeah. So let's talk about phosphatidic acid first. So phosphatidic acid is the simplest phospholipid. So this is basically just a lipid with a phosphate group. There are no other functional groups associated with the phosphate group. So let me draw that out. So 
So these were the two fatty acid chains that are present in triglycerides. I'm going to make R2 as saturated. R2 is a saturated fatty acid. And R3 can be an unsaturated fatty acid. Okay. Now I'm going to draw the phosphate part. So the phosphate part would be present on the first carbon. This is the basic structure of phosphatidic acid or phospholipids. Here, this is the phosphate group. which is the polar group or hydrophilic so that would be the head group and this part would be the hydrophobic group or the non-polar group I would also like to mention another fact that's present here. So we all know that this forms the lipid bilayer. So I'm going to draw out the lipid bilayer. There's a slight kink in one of the tails of the bilayer. This kink is formed due to the unsaturated fatty acid that is present in the structure. So that's why I had taken one saturated and one unsaturated fatty acid. So there you have it. If we're talking about the general structure for phospholipids, instead of having an OH here, there would be an R group where this R group can be anything. It can be a colon, serin, ethanolamine, etc. So according to those functional groups, different types of phospholipids can be formed. So let's look into that as well. So the first one I'm going to be explaining is lecithin. Lecithin is phosphatidylcholine. So I'm going to draw out the structure for lecithin. So let's see. I'm going to draw the two R groups first. Then I'm going to draw the colon group. Okay, so there you have it. That's the structure for lecithin or phosphatidylcholin. So the polar head group would be the phosphatidylcholin group. And this would be the non-polar group. Let's also discuss some characteristics of lecithin. So please write this down as I'm mentioning it in the video. So lecithin is a white waxy substance. That's one characteristic. It can also be a mild emulsifying agent. Emulsifying means that it dissolves fats. And another point is that they can form stable compounds with proteins and carbohydrates. 
uh last point would be colon is an important factor in prevention of fatty liver so yeah there are already small points that's why i'm not writing them down okay next one cephal or phosphatidyl ethanolamine So I'm going to draw the structure for this. The only difference here is in the functional group. So this has two CH2 groups. um this is ch2 yeah so so the only difference is that they have two ch2 groups and an nh3 plus this is ethanolamine so that's the structure for cephalin or phosphatidyl ethanolamine so ethanolamine is a nitrogenous base that is present in cephalin this is a nitrogenous base uh they are mostly soluble in fat solvents except acetone ethyl and methyl alcohol another point is that they are unstable in air and turns dark so when they are exposed to air the substance changes color and it becomes dark so that's all we have to study according to the syllabus now moving on let's talk about derived lipids So derived lipids are substances that are derived from simple or compound lipids upon hydrolysis or through metabolic processing. So we've already discussed different types of derived lipids which includes fatty acids, steroids. Another another derived lipid that we haven't discussed is eicosanoids. Uh we don't really need that because it's not in our syllabus, so I'm not going to get more into that. So I'll write the definition for derived lipids so that would be substances derived from simple or compound lipids upon hydrolysis or through metabolic processing the functions of derived lipids include ho- hormonal precursors signaling molecules etc you can refer back to the previous videos that i've posted so yeah that's that's it for module 2 lipids if i've missed anything out please let me know if you have any doubts please reach out to me ask your doubts in the comments i'll be more than happy to respond to you guys yeah thank you so much for watching like the video subscribe i'll see you in the next one